others. So legally, maybe that's not actually possible in real life to put crime evidence on display in a museum if that's even what this is, but I could be wrong. And why are the masks missing? I'm sure this will play a part in the story going forward too if they're using real costumes, wear the real mask. Again, Hayden's wig is a talk of the town, but I'm certain it looks better on screen. Could this museum, could this museum, if that's what it even is again, have something to do with them talking about true crime in some fashion, like the true crime commentary I know many people want to see. It could have something to do with that. I can't wait to see this trailer next month, but apparently reshoots for the film have also took place, but I assume those were for establishing shots or exterior shots. Also, Big Screen Leaks has chimed in to give us an update on this trailer, saying that, or in response to an account Universal Horror that's been the one that was the original source so far of this leaked image telling them that the that the trailer is not coming out the first week of december like that account claims but there is a date set that i guess big screen leaks know of and they are not going to share that so as far as when i could see it dropping most likely i would see it dropping either sooner due to this leak or dropping around the time of babylon's release something about this seems like it was planned because bloody disgusting started talking about the leak and it's very rare that you see bloody disgusting talk about leaks so it feels like this was an inside job done on purpose but i could be wrong now just to touch on jeepers creepers unfortunately um yeah this news came last week uh we lost nikki acox who starred as minxie hayes in the second entry i believe the character's last name was hayes a Cox's sister-in-law informed the world of this over on Facebook last week and I just want to say I hope that they are showered with love during this time because I know what she was going through it was over on her Instagram if you know what she was dealing with you know that she hadn't posted in a while it was making so many people very concerned for her so that news that we got last week wasn't wasn't comforting at all but Nikki was also in other projects because the Supernatural family have definitely shown up over this unfortunate news to pay respect to their original Meg actress now remember I told you that in Salva's TV show outline he had the character of Minxie as a player involved 23 years later he tweaked it to include the character of Minxie so I will say a part of me while reading that outline was hoping we could get to see her back acting as that character in some capacity and that was just wishful thinking because again Salva and his work were definitely won't ever see the light of day again I don't think but I know she also was referring to herself as a former actress a lot these days and she was dealing with a lot so she wasn't really acting she was dealing with a lot and she unfortunately passed away last week now but I do want to say thank you for all the childhood memories Nikki she was in Joyride 2 but many of us who watch my channel and just watch she was creepers know that she was very well known for her role as Mixie in Jeepers Creepers 2. She did a phenomenal job in that movie. She was phenomenal in what I saw her in in Supernatural when I was watching that show as a kid. Now, she was again also in Joyride, but many of us just knew her as Minxie from Jeepers Creepers 2. And I want to say thank you for the childhood memories. I really hope that you rest in peace. So, just to touch on Terrifier 3, Terrifier 3 is going to pick up where 2 left off. This is according to Damien Leon. And my two cents on that based off is this based off the mid credit scene or the ending scene prior to that so damien tweeted that i he said this i will say terrifier 3 picks up where part 2 ends and it's effing wild maybe i'm forgetting something because i could swear you have two things you could play off of you could either play off the mid credit scene in the asylum with the head birth or the very last scene prior to the credits where i believe the pale girl is taking art's head away from the siblings Terrifier 2 has been very successful, honestly, in its release. It has made over $11 million at the box office. So it's great to see indie horror succeeding like this. And hopefully this means that Terrifier 3 can get a budget closer to $1 million so we can see even more growth in the production value as the series continues to find success. Uh, Terrifier 3 in this opening that could be wild. I don't know what they're playing off of. If they're going off of that asylum sequence then i can see yep that being very wild because that was a very off-putting scene i wasn't expecting that it was very bizarre very unnerving and if they're somehow gonna just pick it up right back there i'm not gonna complain it's a, it's gonna be an abrupt way to just thrust you into the narrative obviously for people who aren't familiar with the series but if that's what he has planned then that's what he has planned i was just uncertain if they really are referring to that or if damien is referring to picking up to 
something that's not related to the mid credit scene, the actual scene that happens prior to the credits rolling. But we'll see, because that's the only part I was confused on. So I hope Terrifier 3 happens sooner rather than later. At the latest, I hope we get it in 2024 around Halloween season, if not 2024. Hopefully the earliest of course is next year, but I don't think it's coming next year. <laughs> earliest will probably be 2024, latest 2025, but we'll see what happens. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is related to Harry Potter. Now, Rafe, Rafe Fines, or Rafe Fines, has let it be known that he'd be down to play Voldemort again. Now, he revealed this, I believe, speaking to Variety. He said, of course, to the idea if Warner Brothers or J.K. Rowling asked him to return. Now, me and many other fans know that his character died during the Second Inquisiting War in the novel, and it was portrayed exactly like that in the books. Although I know there were some tweaks, clearly, that I remember vividly when I watched that movie. I'm like, that's not how he died in the books or at least what happened post if <laughs> so my thing is just because he's dead obviously he can still return we've seen skeet Ulrich return in scream six if they want to bring this actor back to play voldemort i'm not against it my thing is i would prefer to see it done in a way that is during a show centered on the first wizarding war or at least the events that led to it may be told from the perspective of voldemort and ha as he ages we just end up back with ray finds in the role as he who must not be named once more i think that's how it should be done if you were to bring him back do it like that so at least he can have some substantial screen time i wouldn't bring him back in any type of way connected to harry having nightmares all these years later related to Voldemort I wouldn't bring him back in some sort of dream sequence that someone is having about him if you bring him back I would want to see him back in full effect while the character is alive while Tom Riddle is still alive and the way to do that would be to explore the character in some type of prequel series prequel film that builds up to that first Wizarding War that's how I think it should be done but you guys can let me know what you think about it down in the comment section below if you have already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video in the description I'll have links to all my social media accounts I am on Facebook Twitter and Instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video